People whose lives are in turmoil seek help. Nick Sally. You're watching the Associated Press News Station of the Year. Now, coverage you can count on. This is News Center 5. After 15 years, an infamous child abuse case takes a giant step toward freedom for Gerald Amaral. Eunice Kennedy Shriver is taking a step toward recovery, and her family speaks about her accident. And a day at the beach turns into a dangerous situation for vacationers as a tornado touches down in South Carolina. Good afternoon, I'm Rondella Richardson. The Amaral family now eagerly awaits word from the acting governor on the release of the third and last defendant in one of the state's most notorious child molestation cases. Yesterday, Gerald Tuki Amaral learned the parole board voted to have his 30 to 40 year prison sentence reduced to time served. As his sister and co-defendant in the Fells Acre child abuse case learned of the news, News Center 5 was there for the exclusive. A gag order banned Cheryl Amaral Lafay from speaking to the press, but her overwhelming feelings of exuberance and relief are clearly articulated as her family tells her the state parole board unanimously decided her brother's lengthy prison sentence should be commuted. Cheryl was released from prison six years ago. I mean, she's obviously happy to be out herself, but part of her still is there with him and she knows, you know, the day-to-day -day life that he has to lead. Oh my God, we didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> sorry. Hi, Dad. How For the doing? last 15 years, the three Amaral children have shared their lives with their father mostly by phone. Gerald Tukey Amaral's call last night had his girls smiling ear to ear in hopes of a reunion. When I got the phone call from my sister um, at work, I immediately screamed and then I just bawled. It was just really good to finally hear and have it be really good news. Gerald Amaral will not walk free from prison until acting Governor Jane Swift and the Governor's Council approves his release. But the unanimous decision from the five-member parole board is a positive first step. These are the experts and they they held a long hearing, they looked at the record very carefully and I'm confident that while I'm, I'm sure Governor Swift will, will make an independent review and she's going to ultimately agree with them. Gerald Amaralt is following his attorney's advice and speaking about the latest turn of events only with his family but even by phone his renewed optimism is clear. How happy are you? That's what we want to know. How happy yeah. are you? <laughs> Yelling! Oh, I can die now. Aesthetic. This child abuse case involving Gerald Amarald and his mother and sister has a long and complicated history. Fifteen years ago, Gerald Amarald was sentenced to a maximum 40 years in prison for sexually assaulting children at the Fells Acre Daycare Center in Malden. In a separate trial, Amarald's mother, Violent, and sister Cheryl were also sent to prison for abusing eight children. They were freed on bail in 1995. During four consecutive, four subsequent years of legal wrangling, Violet Amaral died and Cheryl struck a deal that reduced her sentence to time served and she never returned to prison. Legal experts feel public opinion played a strong part in the Amaral's convictions. And of course there was a great hysteria going on. People now equate it to the Salem witch trials because during the 80s, all over the United States, People were suddenly finding out about these monsters that run daycare centers and all kinds of convictions were coming down. Although consistently maintaining his innocence, Gerald Emerald was denied a new trial and has remained in prison. But over the years, the methods used to interrogate the children have been questioned and there's been growing support for Emerald's release. Stay with News Center 5 for news of Governor Swift's final decision about the recommendation to commute Emerald's sentence. A late morning accident on the Mass Pike has left two people seriously injured. According to state police, the accident happened just before 11. The car was traveling eastbound on the Mass Pike when it rolled over near exit 17 at Newton Corner. The victims are being treated at local hospitals. The right two eastbound lanes of the turnpike are currently closed. The cause of the accident is under investigation. In other news, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will go to jail for 30 days for protesting Navy bombing exercises on Viegas Island. Kennedy was arrested earlier in the year along with several other demonstrator on the, demonstrators on the Puerto Rican island. The judge in the case says Kennedy and the protesters set a, quote, bad example. President Bush plans to stop the Viegas bombings exercises within two years. 
Doctors say Eunice Kennedy Shriver continues to recover at Cape Cod Hospital. She had leg surgery yesterday following a car accident in Hyannis. Police say the accident was not Shriver's fault. A 20-year-old driver made an illegal left turn and hit her SUV head-on. But family members say the 79-year-old Shriver is making a good recovery. Doing better. Resting comfortably and we appreciate everybody's concern for her. She's had a tough year, but she's a strong woman. Doctors expect to release Mrs. Shriver from the hospital early next week. Acting Governor Jane Swift has returned more than $1,200 in campaign contributions to a strip club owner with a criminal record. William DiYesso gave the Swift campaign money in 1998, 99, and this year. But yesterday, Swift learned that DiYesso had passed forgery and smuggling convictions. Swift's spokesperson says the campaign, does, com campaign committee does not keep donations from convicted felons. Attorney General Tom Riley is launching an investigation of Instar, the power company. During last weekend's storms, hundreds of customers were without electricity for more than 24 hours. Customers say they were left in the dark even when it came to asking Instar for a straight answer as to when their power outage would end. It was Boston Mayor Tom Menino who asked Riley to file legislation to hold Instar accountable for the frequent power outages and the poor customer service. It looks like the investigation into the disappearance of missing intern Chandra Levy is widening. A report in the San Francisco Chronicle says a federal grand jury will begin investigating the case and is likely to call California Congressman Gary Condit. Condit denies having any affair with the 24-year-old, saying they were just good friends. But yesterday, Levy's aunt claimed her niece said she and Condit were lower lovers. The grand jury could allow Washington police and the FBI to subpoena Condit's cell phone bills. Levy disappeared from her Washington apartment in April. President Bush is continuing his 4th of July vacation at the family compound in Kennebunkport, Maine. The president enjoyed a round of golf this morning with his father. Yesterday, the president celebrated his 55th birthday at a family dinner. But it's not all play for the president. In his weekly radio address, Mr. Bush called for quick congressional action on his education reform bill. The president said the bill is a, quote, final exam for Congress before adjourning for its summer recess in August. Bicyclists from throughout Massachusetts are remembering one of their sport's most promising athletes today. Let the sun shine on us. Let us remember that the brightness of today is nothing but a reflection of this person, Nicole Reinhardt, who we knew and loved. And let's just have a great ride in her honor here today. Nicole Reinhardt was killed last September as she competed in a race in Arlington. Today, her friends and family rode in her memory from Waltham to Arlington. Later today, they will hold a memorial service. And as a final tribute to their friend, members of the Saturn Cycling Team will dedicate the Nicole Reinhardt Playground at the Cutter School in Arlington. up on News Center 5 Midday, a tornado touches down on a popular vacation spot down south, and it was all caught on tape. Plus, it's not anything Red Sox fans want to hear. The team has some disappointing news about their ace. Closed caption funding provided by Dunkin' Donuts. When things get a little hectic, there's no place like Dunkin' Donuts to loosen up a little. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. For a free video on the life of Christ, call 1-800-JESUS-2001. You hear a lot about value. Are you listening? The 2001 full-size four-door Tundra shouts. Listen carefully. Powerful. Fast. Strong. Tough. But inside, it whispers Toyota quality. It whispers. See the 2001 Toyota Tundra at your New England Toyota dealer. The crossroads of American value. At Mill Stores, we have thousands of styles of ready-to-finish tables, chairs, benches, cabinets, home accessories, and more. The largest selection in New England. 
In fact, if we showed you all the different items you'll find at Mill Stores, this commercial would last eight and a half days. Our prices, selection, and quality can't be matched. Look at these Mill Store specials. With prices this low, why would you shop anywhere else? At Mill Stores, the possibilities are endless. Let the adventure begin. The BostonChannel.com's auto section is packed with information on cars and trucks, new and used. Everything you want is here at the BostonChannel.com's auto section. And when you're there, click on Giant Glass. It's 1-800-54-GIANT. Mom, I can't sleep. Can I get you anything, honey? An ice cream sundae from Friendly's. Just when you need it most, introducing Friendly's new Triple Sunday Sensations. Three rich ice cream flavors with real sundae toppings and gooey swirls. All in one indulgent half gallon. I can't sleep either. <laughs> Friendly's new Triple Sunday Sensations. Eight varieties ready to take home. You and me and Friendly's. It's fun, it's food, it's fireworks, it's the Brockton Fair. Action-packed rides, live music, games for all ages, thrill to the demolition derby, wager on live thoroughbred racing. The excitement never stops at the Brockton Fair. You're watching News Center 5 Midday. Coverage you can count on with Rondella Richardson, meteorologist Mark Rosenthal, and Mike Lynch on sports. Now, News Center 5 continues. Vacationers in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina had quite a scare when a Vacationers in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina had quite a scare when a water spout came ashore and touched down as a tornado. A witness captured the tornado on home video. The twister tore through buildings and overturned two tour buses. The storm also left 4,000 homes in the dark. Amazingly, no one was seriously injured. Flight attendants say violence in the air is making their job more difficult. The Association of Flight Attendants wants the airlines and the government to do more to stop so-called air rage. They say out-of-control passengers can make a flight dangerous. During a press conference, one flight attendant shared her frightening experience of air rage. Flight attendants were taken away from their duties. The cockpit had to send a pilot back to assist in restraining these women. If we'd had an emergency situation, I shudder to think, think what might have happened. The flight attendants claim airlines are more concerned with profits than the safety of their passengers and employees. The head of the FAA refused to comment on those allegations. On the health beat, British parents have a new way to get a clearer look at the children before they're born. This image of a fetus is in its seventh month. It's from a new 4D ultrasound equipment. You can clearly make out the baby's arms, and if you look closely, you can see it yawning. Doctors hope this clearer image will make it easier to detect birth defects, and it gives parents a unique opportunity to bond with their unborn child. Only one London hospital now has the equipment, but it should be available worldwide within five years. Rescuers will not try to save an endangered rail, whale this weekend, as they had originally hoped. The 50-ton right whale has been tangled in fishing gear off Cape Cod for several weeks. Concerns about possible bad weather are forcing marine scientists to postpone their rescue mission until next week at the earliest. If they are not able to sedate the whale and untangle the line, they fear it will die. It was another roller coaster night for the Red Sox and their fans. Back-to-back -back home runs were not enough to secure a win. Highlights of the back-and-forth battle are next in sports. Plus... The Boston Symphony Orchestra made its summer debut at Tanglewood. You'll hear the traditional performance coming up. This is a challenge. Try finding this bedroom set anywhere else for only $11.94. You can't. Just look at this. And this. And this. And this. And this. Talk about storage. Even this. Now let's raise the bar. Not only the bed wall for $11.94, but also the dresser and mirror. All fronts fashioned from solid oak. Here's the kicker. 9.99% financing. Thinking about painting your car? Stop thinking, do it! Mako's still offering the Ambassador Paint Service for only $199, the best economy paint service in America. How do we do it? Mako paints more cars than anyone. 12 million, still counting. 
And that's why we charge less than anyone. Our Ambassador Pain Service is only $199. Mako gives more value than anyone. What's value? Quality and price. For a great finish and a beautiful deal, call 1-888-MAKO-USA. When the sun is blazing and the summer gets hot, Butter Country's a very cool spot. There's no better place to feel and be young. Butter Country, Butter Country, have some fun. The Boston Channel. Check anxiety at the door and lose the claim stub. The job you deserve is waiting. Career Center powered by HotJobs.com. Search for job listings by city, industry, or keyword. TheBostonChannel.com. Well, the news is not encouraging concerning Pedro Martinez. He told a Dominican newspaper yesterday that he will not pitch at all for the entire month of July. Pedro is going to shut it down for 30 days, use that time period to rest his ailing rotator cuff and his pitch pitching shoulder. He also said that doctors told him that he does not need surgery at this time. Rest is being prescribed. So he says he will join the Red Sox in New York next week after the All-Star break. He'll confer again with the Red Sox team physicians, but he's not even going to pick up a baseball. So the earliest you can expect Pedro back in the Red Sox lineup will be sometime in early August, and who knows, it could be later than that. Now, as for Pedro, Pedro's mates last night, they nearly did it again against the Atlanta Braves. This was one dandy of a baseball game. Game was tied at one in the fourth inning. Two on, nobody else. Scott Hatterberg gets robbed by Brian Jordan. You think that was a great catch. The next batter is Trot Nixon. He sends one into no man's land. And here's that guy, Jordan, again. Is his name Brian Jordan or Michael Jordan? To the eighth inning we go. The Red Sox lead it three to two. Rod Beck is on facing the dangerous Chipper Jones. And Chipper takes Rod Beck off the foul pole. And it's a 3-3 game. To the ninth inning we go. Derek Lowe walked the leadoff batter and it cost him after the batter stole second base. Here comes B.J. Surhoff. He knocks in the go-ahead run. It's 4-3. to three. An error would make it a 5-3 Braves lead. So we go to the ninth inning. There's two outs. Nobody on. Trot Nixon. Solo homer. He hits one where Jordan can't get a mitt on it. It's a 5-4 Atlanta lead. Two out. Next batter up is Manny. He's the last hope. Hit in the air and left. Wow. 5-5. Five, five. So we go to the 10th inning. Three straight walks by Red Sox pitchers. Brian Jordan, who else? Knocks in the winning run. Manny guns down the second would-be run. And here we go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Any threat the Red Sox had snuffed out by great Atlanta defense. Sox lose it 6-5. Here's Jimmy Williams on Pedro. You know, if you want to look at Veritech, if you want to look at Nomar, we really haven't put a time frame on their injuries either. So I'm not going to put a time frame on Pedro's uh, injury uh, just until he gets healed. And then, then we'll know. Why don't we go out there and pitch and feel like he did before he had it? All right, Yankees won again last night. They have won nine games in a row to beat the Mets 8-3, to three, so the Red Sox now are a full game and a half behind the Yankees in the American League East. That's sports for this midday. I'm Mike Lynch. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, everyone. Okay, Mike. Well, if you're trying to get more fruits and vegetables in your diet, here's an idea you may not have thought of. Mr. Food has a way to cook with miniature eggplants. Minis are big. You know, miniature-sized versions of some of our favorite things like like mini donuts or mini bagels or here we've got a garden fresh mini baby eggplant now we may have seen them on our produce counters and not been sure what to do with them well watch we cut six baby eggplant in half lengthwise scoop out the pulp chop it coarsely and combine it in a skillet along with a finely chopped onion and a chopped half of a green pepper a drained can of diced tomatoes and a teaspoon of garlic powder now we cook it about 15 20 minutes you know stirring it occasionally then add in half a cup each of seasoned breadcrumbs and shredded mozzarella cheese a small can of vegetable juice and half a teaspoon of salt now we cook it a bit more just till the liquids all absorbed then we spoon the slightly cooled mixture into eggplant shells place them on a sprayed rim baking sheet we cover them and we bake them off at 350 degrees for about an hour then we sprinkle on a bit more mozzarella back in the oven for another 25 minutes or so and when the eggplant is tender it's done now we've got now many individual portions that we can serve along with our pasta or teamed with a hot off the grill steak 
no matter how we serve it. It fits today's fresh and easy. And if you'd like the recipe, you just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked Stuffed Baby Eggplant to me, Mr. Food, right here at the station. Or look for it online. Either way, we'll get it back to you for proving that minis are big. Big on popular, big on taste, and very big on, oh, it's so good. Wow. For Mr. Food Recipes, send a stamped self-addressed envelope to P.O. Box 265, Needham, Massachusetts, 02492. Or find them online at thebostonchannel.com. You've never seen a place like this, have you? But every day, children like Michelle come here to find cans, bottles, rags, to pick up plastic, hoping to earn a few cents for their families. But when you look out here, you might think, what can I possibly have in common with people like these? Not like me at all. You couldn't be more wrong. Like you, these children know what work is. They know what danger is. They know what friendship is. And like you, they know what love is. But they don't know what a break is because they never had one. How would you like to give a child like Michelle a break? Go to the phone. Call Christian Children's Fund. Give one child a break. Your 80 cents a day means that a child like Michelle can have good food, clean water to drink. It means she might be saved from diseases that a nurse can cure with a shot or a pill. You've never seen a place like this, but you have seen children like Michelle because Michelle is like children everywhere, even like your own children. Except these children need a break. More than 30,000 children died yesterday because they didn't get one. Call Christian Children's Fund. We'll send you a picture of a child like Michelle. We'll tell you where she lives, a little bit about her life and family. There's no obligation, but if in your life anybody's ever given you a break when you needed one, call Christian Children's Fund and give it back to a child who needs one now for 80 cents a day. Call now. Christian Children's Fund is America's oldest and most trusted child sponsorship charity because so much of your money goes right where it belongs to the children who need it. The Boston Symphony Orchestra opened its season at Tanglewood last night. And while every performance is memorable for the audience, this show was particularly special for the orchestra's famous conductor. New Center 5's Dixie Watley has more. A beautiful beginning for a bittersweet end, says Yozawa's final season as the Boston Symphony's music director. And joining him to open this memorable summer, one of his closest friends, Chelislava Rostropovich. He's like, he really like my big brother. But Rostropovich sees it more as what twins. I not, I not agree with him. I think that we twins. Twins? Yes. Twins. You look just alike. <laughs> yes, you know, that's not important how it looked, but more important how we feel in our life, for music, for our life. I like him enormously. That's my deepest friend. And deepest friends are there for each other at difficult times. I guess uh, he thinks this is my last summer, <laughs> Tangerwood, you know, as a director. It, it's not going to be last summer. I, I, we, uh, my family is so much tied with this memory, with this uh, special place, and house, and Tangerwood. So. But as an official, my, as a man, as a music director, <laughs> but I don't think about this. So Rostropovich is here to help distract him. Quixote is what they played together tonight, and this work about a knight who battled windmills is, in Rostopovich's opinion, an appropriate choice. For us, for twins, <laughs> a real great, great reason for make music, because he and I, we live with Don Quixote in life. For the Midday, I'm Dixie Watley. Now, New England's latest weather, the Storm Track 5 forecast. 
All right, so the weekend will not be a washout, the second part of it. However, we do have some changes in the forecast. Get out and enjoy today because today is definitely the best day across the area. Sunny and warm, but changes are coming for tomorrow with a lot of clouds and some showers, but it is not going to rain all the time. I want to stress that you'll still be able to get outside. As a matter of fact, if you have a golf game or something like that, I wouldn't cancel it because it won't be raining for uh, all the daylight hours. Right now, 73 in Boston, a bit cool for some. Notice the cool air goes all the way down the mid-Atlantic states, down into North Carolina. A bit unusual for early July to have the cool air go that far to the south. And what's even more unusual is the humidity. It's really dropped all the way down south of Washington, D.C. Look at Norfolk, a dew point of 52. And any time dew points are below 60, you don't have a lot of humidity. And indeed, that's the case further back towards the west. So I don't expect any humidity in here for today. We'll be watching this area of cloudiness in here move off towards the east over the next 12 to 24 hours. That's why I'm a bit pessimistic, at least in terms of sunshine for tomorrow. You can see the rain crossing the Great Lakes right now, moving into the Ohio Valley. And again, overnight tonight, it will get closer to us. If you're headed to the beach, temperatures will be in the 60s at the water, 70s inland, sun going down at 824. Let's go to the forecast for the next five days. We'll start it out with this afternoon and a live shot of just how beautiful it is. Mostly sunny, 75 to 80, a real nice one. Get out and enjoy it for tonight. Clear, then cloudy late, comfortable, temperature 60 to 65. Tomorrow, mainly cloudy, a period of showers, but it will not rain all the time. Temperatures in the 70s, and Monday, the sunshine should return with temperatures on Monday right near 80 degrees and uh, more showers and thunderstorms in here for the middle part of next week. Temperatures in the lower 80s. That sounds actually very pleasant. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. You're Dave. welcome. And thank you for joining us on News Center 5 Midday. We want you to know we'll be back here at 6 o'clock tonight with more news, so we'll see you then. The Boston Sunday Globe recently had an interesting article about the cost of water, specifically in the towns west of Boston. We in eastern Massachusetts do enjoy a high quality water supply and a revived Boston Harbor, both of which we've paid for in one of the third highest water and sewer bills in the nation. As we've noted before, it might make sense to at least look at whether privatizing the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority might be a wise fiscal course of action. This is not a pioneering concept, but has been adopted successfully